Welcome back to the show. Evan and Fez had to leave, but we still have us four here. We're going to talk about Christopher Nolan now. And at a time when Hollywood seems to be devoid of creativity and ideas, just recycling the same movie after another, Christopher Nolan has made some of the most entertaining and exhilarating pictures of the last decade. For an industry that's usually so profit-hungry, he avoids all of the usual marketing traps. Dylan, what do you think is a recurring theme throughout Nolan's films? I think one thing Nolan always loves to touch on is reality and the questionable aspects of it. He loved in Inception and in Memento especially, pointing out how subjective our reality really is, or at least what we can perceive of it. Because in Inception he points out there, there may be more to it than we can grasp. Just the subjectivity of realities is a very common theme in Christopher Nolan's movies. The characters. Um, they're, they're usually morally ambiguous. Um, you, you don't really say like, oh, he's supposed to be the good guy, he's supposed to be the bad guy. In Inception, you, you realize you're rooting for the bad guys. Prestige, you know, at the end, um, you can't even like formulate an, an answer as to, as to uh, uh, what happens at the, at the end. It can, it can go either way. So I think like he's really, he, he, play, he, always, he always ends his movies in a way where he leaves it up to the audience to decide what happens. And I feel like that's great because then you start speaking about his movies for years to come. So ambiguity for me is like his main theme for me it's character study he always puts two people against each other in this psychological duel of a chess game batman and the joker pacino and williams jackman and bale and in between this character matchup there's this psychological force field or unpredictable force of nature looming over everyone whether it's dreaming and inception or paranoia and insomnia he loves psychology he loves toying with his characters and those dark aspects are always incorporated into his screenplays. I like the fact that he's able to take to create really dark characters, but you can find a way to actually like them, which was weird to me. The high level of of complexity to that that you find in the Joker's character. That he really is smart, you know, even though he has this appearance to be, you know, the sort of carefree terrorist that tries to attack off him. And then you have other characters like in Inception, where you were talking about how DiCaprio, uh, you know, how their team is, you know, trying to take away. And then you also have the wow factor. It's like, you know, you also don't, don't know what's going on. And I kind of found that the most in the last Batman movie, where it's just like, you, you do understand what's going on, but at the same time, you don't know what's going to happen. You always see the same production people and actors throughout his films. It's kind of a nice throwback to those old 40s Humphrey Bogart, John Huston pictures. I was going to ask what everyone's favorite Batman film was. My favorite Batman film was also my favorite Nolan film, The Dark Knight, because unlike the campier early Batman films, as everyone pointed out, this one has more psychological weight and character intrigue. The story is dramatically compelling. The effects are exhilarating. And Heath Ledger, of course, gives the performance of the decade. My favorite Batman is Rises. I like conclusions, and I like them done well. The movie was not about Batman. It was about finding Batman for, for, for Bruce Wayne. And all that pain he went through just to put the suit back on, he found out that he's not Batman. In Rises, it was more of he had to protect the city as a whole. If Gotham falls, who's to say they're not going to do it everywhere else? So I, I felt like he had more on his plate, and that's why I prefer that one overall. And, you know, I do agree with you. I think the stakes are higher in The Dark Knight Rises than they were in The Dark Knight. But I disagree in your favorite Batman film. I have to say The Dark Knight is by far the best in Nolan's trilogy. It completely redefined what the superhero movie was supposed to be. I think the tension is built better in The Dark Knight through the music and through every single thing about the movie. The audio and, and the, everything on the mise-en-scene contributing to that tension constantly building. And in The Dark Knight Rises, I just didn't feel it. So I think The Dark Knight is clearly the better of the two. I tend to be a sucker more for the classics. Um, my favorite, favorite Batman was Batman Forever. It's just because I love Jim Carrey. He did the, the role so well. Thank you. I simply love what you've done with this place. Heavy metal meets house and garden. <laughs> but as for, you know, more of a comic book sense, one that tends to go back to the real Batman, the real comic book Batman, uh, I have to go with that <laughs> forever. And also, just as a final shout out, uh, Batman Returns amuses me, maybe just because of Max Shrek's hairdo, <laughs> only played by Christopher Walken. Yeah. And after uh, seeing a thousand penguins strapped with nuclear bombs to their backs, <laughs> now I've seen everything. Okay, when we come back, we're going to give our final critiques on The Dark Knight Rises and ask students on campus what they thought about the film. <laughs> 